I wanted to use this intro to show off my new bedroom perfumery. I've got my own essential oils, raw materials, and I've even made a few fragrances of my own. And they're not horrendous, guys. They're not horrendous. They don't make you want to gag, which, if you ask me, is a roaring success. Today we're doing episode two of our series, reacting to other reviewers' most popular videos. Episode one was Justin Copeland, and today we are reacting to Demi Rawlings' most popular video. Let's get into it. Grab your coffees if you haven't already. Class is in session. The video is titled 10 Woman Killer Fragrances for Men. And with a title like that and someone as attractive as Demi on the thumbnail, you know it's just basically proven to work, these kind of uh, video titles. And bear in mind, it's only 2019, so I think the recommendations are going to be up to date and modern enough. I think it should be a good video, 1.4 million views, fantastic. Let's get into it. Can I just say, I quite like Demi's style of having quite a minimalist background. I think it works for her. I think it's just... The main issue when you're a YouTube creator is having the the consistency and you want to reduce as many obstacles in the way of you just simply hitting record. You don't want to make things too tiring for you. So I think just having a nice simple wall, having a simple setup like this means Demi is very much able to put out a lot of videos out there. It's a very important point for any content creator. I'm going to be totally honest. There's probably about three fragrances in this list that I personally am not the biggest fan of, but I put them in the list because I have personally met so many women that say so many incredible things about those certain three fragrances. One of I like that, the honesty. It's not a list purely about her. It's always better when you get lots of different people's opinions and, and have them positively uh, view a fragrance. It means you're gonna get a better, better purchase for your money. One of the person, one of the women, is Shelby, my sister. We have the same taste, but we also have different tastes. And her sister is amazing. I'm not sure if you've seen the videos, but Shelby is super cool. I, I, I think it's a very good uh, good choice by Demi to have her in a lot of her videos. She's a bit more dark and a bit more uh, biker mechanic-like in her style, which is really nice. It's awesome. Now, you guys always comment on my videos whenever I do like um, a top parfum de Mali or like my favorite parfum de Mali is you will notice that this is never in my personal favorites because for me personally, me, Demi, this is, um, uh, this is not my favorite. I completely agree about Pegasus. I do not think it's one of my favorites in Parfum de Mali either, but I do know a lot of people who do get a lot of compliments from it. I think it's just a little bit too dense. It's like a heavy, sweet, milky, metallic almond. The vanilla in there just way too much for me. So maybe it's the kind of fragrance other people passing by will enjoy it. But you as the wearer, if you're gonna experience it for, for 20, if you're gonna experience this for over 12 hours, I think Pegasus is a no-go. I would rather just spend less money and get our maths craze personally to have the DNA at a cheaper price. Again, despite my feelings of Dior Sauvage, I cannot tell you how many girls are obsessed with this scent. Yeah, we won't spend too much time on Sauvage. It's the fourth video in a row now that's been mentioned in our channel. Yes, everyone knows Sauvage is versatile, mass appealing, very common. You're not going to smell unique, but you'll get compliments with it. Let's move to the next fragrance. We nailed it down to two that we both agree on are the sexiest, addictive, man-killer scents. This is Blessed Baraka. I actually took this to New York with me. I wore this at Scent Explore. I got so many compliments on the scent. Yeah, and this year, I haven't smelled Blessed Baraka, but their speciality essentially is Orientals, intense, complex, spicy fragrances. So if that's the kind of vibe you like, if you like Parfum de Marley, but you want to go more into the spicy and less sweet side, then check out Inicio Parfums. They do some good fragrances, definitely. Percival, Percival, okay. I constantly get questions from people that are just getting into fragrance, they're just getting into niche, and they ask me, they say, Demi, I know you love Parfum de Mali, which is the gateway fragrance to the brand? They ask me, which is the fragrance that you recommend? I've only got a few designer fragrances, but I really want to try Parfum de Mali, which one do I try? 
Yeah, I completely agree. Two gateway fragrances apart from the Marley. If you want to go sweet, you go for Layton. If you want to go fresh, you go for Percival. They're the most safe blind buys you can get out of the brand. I don't think anyone's going to hate them. Percival is very sharp, has that Amber Crombie and Fitch Fierce DNA, but Fierce has been reformulated badly. So this is the only good fragrance with that DNA, in my opinion. And it's beast mode, a freshly lasting over 12 hours, making this very good value for money. Yes, Percival is not a challenging niche fragrance, but I think it's definitely a good purchase. This is like where my fragrance journey began. Pacific Rock Moss from Goldfield and Banks. Totally, totally a woman killer scent. Doesn't matter what you say. Uh, personally, I believe women like either fresh or sweet on a man. Fresh or sweet. And for me, in my experience, women mostly like the fresher sort of things. In fairness, that's the only two categories there are of fragrances. They either usually are fresh or sweet, but I made the same comments before is you kind of know what she means. So this is a total killer. I know this from experience. I know this from messages, from DMs, from emails. I know this. I know this from myself. I wear this fragrance all the time. And I have a really close um, guy friend in my life who I absolutely love and adore. And I gifted this bottle to him, not this one, but a bottle of Pacific Rock Moss. And he told me, he said, Demi, the amount of compliments that I get with this scent, I have never had such attention on my fragrance in my life. So I haven't tried out this fragrance either. What I know about Goldfield and Banks is that they're an Austra Australian niche brand who specialize in creating long lasting summertime fragrances. If that's what sounds good to you, make sure to check them out. I have actually have my first purchase from them called Bohemian Lime on the way. So I'll let you guys know what I think. Eros, Eros, oh. Eros, the king, the clubbing king. I actually smelled this in New York City. There was a guy, he was walking past me. He looked about maybe, I would say maybe 17, 17 or 18. And I could tell straight away. I was like, this dude's wearing Eros and he smells freaking amazing. Yeah, you know what? Eros is, is a little bit underrated and how sexy it smells. It's not a complex fragrance. I think its main drawback is it will bore you as the wearer fairly quickly. But I smelled it on my friend as well, who haven't seen it in a few years. And he told me he had a surprise fragrance to to uh, to put on for me. He wanted to see if I knew it. It took me a little while to get it, but it, yes, it was Eros. It smelled surprisingly expensive, really sexy. It's just a, a really nicely balanced scent. It's got a perfect balance of both fresh and sweet. And so I do think it definitely deserves a spot in this list. Layton, okay, so like I was saying about these two, when people ask me, there's a third one in here, there is a third. But when people ask me, I always say Percival. Yeah, so Demi is known, she is very much <laughs> known for loving Parfum de Marly. So she always pushes them in her videos because I, I believe they, they're just her favorites. I think that's cool. I think everyone should have their own favorite brands. Um, and yes, as she said what I said earlier, basically, Layton is impossible to hate in my opinion. Probably one of the few 10 out of 10 scents that exist on the market. Shelby was like, you have to include Aquadigio Profumo. You have to. And I said, it's not my favorite. And she said, doesn't matter. It's most women's favorite. And that is so true. I have to take my personal feelings out. From my experience, it doesn't actually seem like women's favorites, only because I think the Aquadigio DNA has been around for so long. So it's got the Aquadigio DNA. It, you know, it works fine. It's easy, fresh, and lasts all day. I think it's quite a mature scent. I don't think Profumo is a mind blowing scent. It is a solid scent. It's a solid foundational scent, but I do not think it's anything mind blowing. And I do not believe it is a woman killer fragrance unless you're a very specific kind of guy, a guy who likes to dress in, in maybe a darker suit, someone who's a little bit more mature. Over the age of 30, I say, is when Aqua di Gio Profumo becomes at, at its most optimal. My other Inicio, I have spoken about so much already since I got it. And I literally am gonna buy a backup bottle because of how much I adore this scent. I adore it so much. Food for greatness. It's just a masterpiece, a total masterpiece to me. Shelby is obsessed with this. We're actually gonna do an Inicio video later because I asked her, I was like, let's do an Inicio video, we have to. So, Food for Greatness, it's, Brilliance comes in the fact that it's a very much balanced oud. It uses a lot of other spices with some fresh notes to make this quite an easily wearable oud. You can wear it pretty much every day as your signature, I would say. The only thing is, I'm not sure how much real oud is in this fragrance. Um, I'm a little bit skeptical. Um, and I don't think it's completely mind-blowing, completely challenging as a niche scent. It's more of an easily approachable niche scent, in my opinion. So if you want a very, if you want a high quality daily oud scent, I definitely would go for oud for greatness. I think it is very good, but 
I think it's a tiny, tiny bit overhyped, but it's definitely a good fragrance. For me, these are the two most likable fragrances from Parfum de Mali, Dali and Percival, and then Leighton. Now, if you don't know this, this is criminally, criminally underrated from the house. This is criminally underrated. Interesting, I've never seen this video. I don't know much about Dali, so let's go and Fragrantica and have a look at its notes. Okay, it is quite barbershop-like. Mint, lavender, cinnamon and tonka bean. It's very interesting. This seems, just from a quick glance, seems like a niche version of Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mal. Uh, all the notes, the main prominent notes are <laughs> shared in Le Mal. That's interesting. And uh, what's the longevity like? Long lasting goods, you're getting your money's worth. And yeah, there we are. This perfume reminds me of Le Mal. A lot of people are saying it does remind them of it. It's interesting. Totally, 100%. This is one of the best everyday fragrances that you could ever wear. In my eyes, this is 10 out of 10, 12 out of 10, the best of the best. It's aromatic, it's got lavender, some mint, it's fresh out of the shower, you spritz it on, you smell so sexy. It's like a fresh, mm. um, a fresh barbershop sort of scent, but not too intense. It sounds very much like if you're annoyed by the fact that Le Mal got reformulated and is so much weaker now. I think Darley might be quite a good alternative. I love Le Mal, so I'm actually going to check it out because of this video. So I'm very much glad I, uh, I've stumbled upon this. There we are, guys. That's the reaction. I think that is a good video. I like the way that Demi just uses a quite a casual, impromptu style of talking to the camera, as well as having her own stories about her friends and family with these fragrances. I think she picked up some really good scents. You can definitely tell she likes more oriental, spicy brands like PDM and Inicio, which is awesome. She definitely sticks to her guns, and I've definitely loved watching her for many years. She's one of the first reviewers I actually used to watch. Very much entertaining, love her stuff. I wish she would upload more nowadays, but I do think she's doing other projects. So yeah, guys, let me know what other fragrance reviewers would you like to see me react to? I'm gonna try and recreate Parfum de Mali's Leighton in my own little bedroom perfumery. I'll let you guys know. If it doesn't make me gag, I will say that's a good success. We'll see you in the next one, guys. Make sure to check out our other videos. Class dismissed.